Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're out here again today. It's kind of sprinkling rain, so we'll see how much work we can get done today. But anyway, I thought today we would come out and strip the forms, check the pad again for square, get it all prepared to start building on. Um, like I said, it's kind of sprinkling rain, so we'll see how much video I can get in today. Uh, I'll kind of show you what I did when I set the forms and how we're going to strip them. Okay, when I set the forms, I backfilled with some clay to kind of give it more support so it doesn't push the forms out. And I've been digging this out, uh, getting the dirt out of the way and everything so I can strip the forms. So this is where I'm at right here. I need to do some more work here. And then we can start taking the stakes out and everything and start pulling the forms off and seeing how the concrete looks underneath. Okay, we got most of the dirt away from the forms. Um, try to pile it back out of the way a little bit. And then we'll get the drill out, start unhooking some of the stakes, and then we can pull the, pull the forms off. Okay, I have all the stakes pulled out of this side anyway. I found the easiest way to do these forms is to build these little wings off of the form, put the stake in, and then attach it to those little wings. Because a couple reasons. One thing, it keeps that stake back away from the edge. And if you're trying to run a screed along that edge, the stake gets in the way if you attach it right to the form sometimes. And another thing is, uh, as far as, like when you're looking at left to right, where the stake is doesn't really matter. And even, even when you're looking at it this way, whether the stake goes a little to the left or a little to the right, you can just bend that wing one way or the other, where when you're putting them right against your form, they've got to be right on the money, otherwise your form is off. So I kind of like doing them this way, kind of attaching them to those little wings, keeps them up and out of the way.
Okay, I got at least the top form board off, came off fairly easy, and concrete looks real good under there. Now I need to take these, these little wings off of here and separate them because those I need to keep and keep them from warping because they are going to be base plates eventually. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. Okay, well, we got the forms off this side. That wasn't too awful bad. Now I'll take all these uh, pieces of wood off the back side and the scab boards and everything, stack them over here in the shade also so they don't warp too bad till I use them. Okay, we're making progress getting this form off. One thing that makes it a little harder is, see along here, I have these other rebar sticking through the form out here like uh, about 16 inches or so, something like that. And these are to tie in the apron, which will eventually be poured out here for an approach to the garage. So it makes it a little harder to get these form boards off because they have to come straight out all the way to the end before they'll come off. And in places you'll have concrete in front of the form, so they can't come straight out because of the concrete. So it makes it a little more challenging, but it's moving. It's just a matter of a little bit of work to get it done here. See, here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to get too aggressive with this edge. You see, I chipped the concrete right here a little bit from using the pry bar against it because the concrete has only been down for three or four days, so I don't want to ruin any of this. I may have to just cut this into pieces to get it off, just so I don't destroy the, uh, the concrete trying to do it. Okay, uh, I think it's fixing to rain. I can hear the rain coming through the woods and it's on the uh, hill across the south of me. I can kind of hear it. It has cooled it off a little bit out here, which helps some. But uh, in the meanwhile, while I'm waiting for the rain to start, I am going to get my batteries charged up for the Sawzall and cut these forms into a few pieces so I can get them off from where the rebar is sticking out. You can hear the rain coming. I don't know if it's going to get us, but it's just on the hillside to the south of us. Yep, it's starting to rain. Okay, everybody. Uh, the rain stopped a couple hours ago. And uh, I was actually out here kind of working in the rain. I got this form board off this side. I had to cut it into, as you can see, several pieces to get it off of here. 
because I was starting to just ruin the concrete trying to pry it off. So that was, I think, the better way to go. I probably should have done that before. But anyway, this side's off. I have to take it apart. And then I have one more side to strip the forms off of. Uh, normally, stripping the forms off would probably be like a, what, a 30-minute job. But because they're buried a little bit in to the dirt and everything, I have to take the pick and pick them out and get it all apart. Uh, it's actually taken most of the day today to get these off of here. But uh, once they are, I'll clean up, kind of level the area around the pad so I can work a little better. And then we can start construction. Okay, well, that's a little bit easier to walk on anyway. It's not really level or perfect. It's kind of wet out still for really finishing it off. And I'll probably need to bring in a little dirt or rearrange some fill because eventually I'd like a little nice slope back here, something I can mow and some grass on it so it's kind of lower maintenance. But uh, got this side pretty good. At least all the big rocks picked up and smoothed out. And across the front for now. At least I don't have that big pile here anymore. Um, need some, uh, I gotta do something about that pile there. I forgot about it. <laughs> That's kind of in the way of my driveway. But anyway, uh, next step, I gotta pick up all the screws that are laying everywhere. And then I think I'm gonna spray it off, get it nice and clean. And then we can check for front to back dimension, side to side and check for square again. Um, and start planning the layout for our building.
Okay, I'd say that's not too bad. Um, whew. The front and the back and this side are perfect, like to within less than a sixteenth of an inch. That long side over there is just a little short, about a quarter inch short or so. And then as far as square goes, uh, I'm to within about an eighth of an inch of being in square. So for concrete work, I'm super happy with that. Uh, you never know when they're pouring, you know, they can move the forms or any number of things can happen. I had a little problem with the boards warping because from the time I put the form boards down till we poured concrete was like a month and it's been super hot and dry. So some of the boards were warping. I should replace a couple of them. But for all being said and done, I think that looks really good. I'm happy with it. Uh, on to the next step, which is making a materials list. Well, everybody, we're back out here on another day. Uh, it's been a couple days uh, since we were working last and uh, the rain has stopped. The heat's come back. It's plenty warm out here. It's kind of after work. So I'm working kind of in the evening a little bit. And the next step I'm doing is I'm laying out all the base plates so that I know how many studs I need and determine where the windows are and the doors and everything. So uh, I'll kind of show you how I'm doing that next. Okay, the first thing I do is I lay out all my stud centers and you lay those out from the outside of the building. Now this wall is along the left side of the building. So it will actually butt into the wall in the front and our walls, and I'll explain to you why here in a minute, but I'm making them five inches thick. So these are five inches this way. I took a half inch off that way it works out. So if you do a two by four stud and then your purlins for the metal siding is inch and a half, it will come out exactly five. So since this wall butts up against the front wall, I have to remember to burn five inches there at the beginning. And then what I'll do is every 16 inches, I'll mark a stud center all the way along. And I won't worry about windows or where they go or anything yet. I'll just go through and mark all my 16 inch centers first, okay? And then this is going to be 12 foot long wall. Uh, because I'm doing that far wall in two pieces, just so it's a little easier for me to stand it up instead of trying to stand up a 24-foot wall. Then I'll come back and I'll determine where my windows need to be. So let me move this out of the way. This is a cripple here. Uh, so my window starts here and goes that way. So uh, I go stud and cripple. And then this is all window in here. And here's the other side of the window here. So the other side will be here. That's... Uh, four foot rough opening is what that's going to be for a four foot window they'll be three feet tall uh, and i'm going to put sliders in i think that should give me maybe good ventilation i'll put several of those in this building so that's what i do there i'll lay out all these base plates first and then i can take my once i determine where all my studs go and everything and it all works out good then i will lay the top plates up here above it and i'll just transfer all my lines across to them so as you can see, I've got several there started already and laid out. And I am setting them there on the concrete and then I've been keeping them covered because uh, once they start really getting hot, they'll start warping and I don't want to have to fight them later on. But uh, these are the boards that I had used for the forms. So anyway, this one's laid out. Uh, we'll get another one and lay it out next. Okay, now we got our five inch wide. I can lay it out now for the stud centers.
I'm doing 16 inch centers because eventually I'm going to put sheetrock in the garage. If you're just doing pole barn style with metal siding, you can go a lot further apart than that. But I think it's easier just to do the 16 inch centers. That way everything is standard on the inside of the building. Okay, I'm coming in about four feet from each end, uh, which would put them plenty far apart. I think there'll be good good light and everything. That kind of faces north that direction. So uh, I'll go ahead and lay out for the windows. Let's see. I'm going to butt this one up against a stud. That way I have the real stud with the cripple right next to it. And then four feet down here for a stud. A cripple and a stud and I'll mark those so I know where they are uh, and then I'm gonna kind of mark this window even though these studs will be here they'll just be shorter they'll come up underneath the, the sill so that one is pretty much all laid out now and marked Okay, since this is the front wall, this wall will go all the way to the outside of the concrete. So I'm hooking the tape measure right on the end, starting with our board on the end. There'll also be another one laying right here along this edge that will help attach the other wall to. Um, so you're going to be down to here with the end of it at five inches because that's one, two, three and a half back. And it'll actually lay this way. There'll be one here and one here. And then we will start from this outside and go uh, every 16 inches. I've been marking both sides. You don't have to. You can just mark one side and then put an X on the side that the stud goes on. But I'm marking both sides. I don't know how well you can see any of that. I said it ends with 12 foot 11. Uh, down here, there's going to be uh, triple studs to help hold the, uh, you'll have, I'm going to do three uh, two by four studs, and or cripples rather, and then one uh, stud on the end. So you'll have four on each end, three holding up that door. Uh, so I'll go ahead and draw the lines on here now, and uh, get this ready to figure out where the door is going to be, because there's going to be a, a walkthrough door on the front. Okay, we got it laid out. I drew my lines where the studs go. I'm not going to go through this every time. I know I'm probably boring some of you guys, but uh, I'm just kind of showing you how I do it anyway for someone who might be interested in building a building themselves. Uh, I decided to put the door here uh, about three feet in from the end. That way, if I ever want to put a workbench along this wall, I can and it won't really be in the way. Uh, so I put, this is a regular stud here. I just put a cripple next to it and then it's a 36 inch door. So I always go two and a half inches over door size. So that's 38 and a half inches clear, which brings me to here. And then there's the, uh, cripple in the stud there. These will be studs, but not obviously there because there's a door, but they will be, those lines will be transferred up above the door for studs above the header. Uh, so anyway, this one's laid out. It's, uh, Starting to get a little bit later. I might try to get one more done, but I think we'll wrap it up for this week. Um, I know it didn't get a lot done, seems like. I did get the form stripped, the ground kind of leveled around it, and the base plates laid out. 
that tells me how many studs I need and how long the headers will be and how many of those I need and everything. And uh, then next week we'll get some studs in here and start putting some walls together and it should start going fairly quick then. Okay, everybody, I think it's about time to wrap up this week. I just wanna take a few minutes to give credit where credit is due. Uh, anything I know today about building, construction, electrical, plumbing, all those things, uh, I give credit to my father-in-law who, uh, when I was first married, I went to help him on some electrical jobs and uh, he taught me very well on how to do things the right way. He's kind of old school craftsman who does things the right way, not the shortcuts. Um, and uh, just taught me a lot uh, and kind of taught me that, hey, I can do this. A lot of times I think we need to kind of encourage the younger generation uh, instead of discouraging them and kind of teach them that, hey, you can do these things, you know, and uh, it just takes the confidence to try. And so uh, over the years, uh, my father-in-law and I built our first house, uh, which is a beautiful home, just not far from here. And then uh, about 10 years ago, he helped and we built the house I'm living in now. Well, we've built cabins. It, that way I have the, the courage to take on a project like a garage, even though it may not be real hard, but for someone who hasn't done it, it might be a little uh, uh, daunting. Uh, and also uh, my kids both have kind of picked up on the trades. Uh, my older son does more, uh, he has a huge heart for those who are struggling with mental illness and such. Uh, so he does a lot of that. That's what he does for a living. Uh, but he can also get right out there and swing a hammer as good as anybody else. Uh, my younger son and his wife, they're actually building their own home today. Uh, so that knowledge that uh, my father-in-law gave to me uh, was passed down to the next generation. And uh, another advantage of that is when I need help around here, I can uh, give the boys a holler and they'll come help. And uh, it's, it's a huge help. So I just kind of wanted to take a minute here and give credit where credit is due. Um, uh, thanks to my father-in-law, you know, I can, I can do a lot of these things and save a lot of money. And I just enjoy working on things like this. There's something satisfying about building something. And at the end of the day, you can say, hey, you know, I built that or whatever. So anyway, I hope you all have a great week and I hope to see y'all down the trail.